in this section of the presentation, I will introduce to, to, to all of you a couple of uh, system reports that may not be that, that known up to this point. The first set of reports are uh, the sales and purchase analysis, and the second is the report scheduler, when I can just schedule to get a report in my, in my mail. So let's go see the good things about the sales and purchase analysis. Since they are out of the box reports that you can run in SAP Business One, these two reports are system fields based reports, which means you can utilize um, all properties, all item groups, all customer groups that, that we have set as part of the the setting of the company. The second good thing about this is the flexibility that you can get with this report. What I what do I mean by flexibility is in in, in, in the first instance of the reports you can get a high level report or information of the sales or the purchases that you have done in a period of time. But at the same time you can add some level of detail, detail I'm sorry, for, for that report. So you don't only get a high level of information, you can still drill down a couple steps forward or down from that information and you can play with, with that data. And the third thing that, that I wanna highlight is like, like pretty much like everything else in business one in sub business one that's gonna be real time information real a report in real time you don't need to uh, set it to get it uh, with the information up to the day before if you just made a, an invoice a transaction whatever that's gonna be included in that report that you're gonna run and the second tool, I'm, ooh, I'm sorry, for the second tool, we have the, the report scheduler. So these two um, need a little bit of more preparation than, 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 than the two that we just saw, the sales, the sales and purchase analysis. And this is why do you need that, that, that preparation. And when it will be useful, will be made sense to use this report scheduler. So the first thing is uh, if you need to get information or data of certain reports on a regular basis, then it makes all the sense that you can schedule to get those on a weekly basis or daily basis that you don't have to base getting that information on your on your memory. So you just program it, set it, and you just get it. The other thing is um, if for some instance, for some reasons, you're not gonna have access or immediate access to SAP Business One, then you don't need to wait for that access to get the information that you need. If you schedule it on a daily basis, you know you're gonna get that information in your mail, regardless if you have or not access to SAP in that very moment. Uh, the fair good reason to use this is uh, if you don't wanna wait long time or cannot wait long time to get some information, you just schedule report it back, execute it on a regular basis, and then you have it. You don't need to wait all long because you don't have access, because you don't have the information, because you don't have the authorization. You just get the report, that's it. And the other good thing that you can utilize 
with this uh, schedule reports is you can build on on comparisons um, for those reports. So if I schedule one on a weekly basis, at the end of the month, I can I can do a comparison of the four weeks or five weeks of the month because I know I have the same structure in the report. So you, it will be easier to, to just export that to Excel or another tool, but I can do all my analysis. But the good thing is that I know that the information will be consistent in, in its structure, so it will be easier to just uh, play with it and and run the different uh, scenarios, if you want to call it that way, that you can do when having uh, data to, to be compared. And for this second tool, you will need to have two things set up in your system. One, you need to have configured your SAP Business One mailer tool. And uh, the technical person or the IT department in your, in your company can help you with that. Or just send us an email and we can give you the guide you through, through the process of setting, setting that. And the second one is you need to have assigned at least one layout to the query that you want to run so you can get your report. Because if you get the query and there is no report, it's basically there's no way that you're gonna get it in, in, the, in, your, in, your, in your email. So it's very important that we can assign a layout to the query that's gonna be that report that is gonna be scheduled to, to be received in your, in your email, okay? So now let's go into SAP and start theorizing and get into, into a practice. So for those of you that are not familiar with this view, this is version 10. It's the latest release uh, from from uh, SAP Business One, but do not worry, everything that I'm gonna show you, even though it's, it's being shown in, on version 10, is gonna work for, for the version 9.3. So, so don't worry about that. So let's go into action. For the sales analysis, we go to the sales module sales reports, sales analysis. And the first thing that you're gonna see is this window is gonna show you all the criteria that you can use to apply to the report. So in this, uh, you see we have three options here. We have one tab customers, one for items, and one for sales employees. And uh, we have different selections of the type of reports that I, that I can get can get it on an annual basis, monthly basis, or quarterly basis. Everything based on the date range that I'm gonna select here. So if, it's a, if I select an annual report, it's gonna just be like a consolidated figure of the, the cells within this range. If I do monthly, the system we're always gonna take that big chunk of information and just, it's gonna just break it down by month. And if I select quarterly instead of by month, it's gonna do it by quarter. Then I can select if, if I can gonna base my report on the actual invoices or just the open orders that I have. If in your process there's a gap between the deliveries and the invoices, then you can create a, a third instance that is the report based on the deliveries. But if you jump straight from, from sales orders to invoices, then you have just these two options. Um, 
then for the dates, we can do the, the selection using the posting date, the due date or the document date. For this example, we're gonna use the posting date. And then for the main selection, in this tab that we have in customers, I can select one particular customer or a range of customers that are all consecutive or just a group of the customer based on the, on the customer group that I have set. Also, if I'm working with properties, I can include some of the properties as a filter for the report that I'm, that I'm gonna get. So let me just run this one real quick here. I'm gonna do monthly report for invoices from January 1st to December 31st, 2020. Let's see what we get. So we have my total sales for the year, starting in January, $195,000, six customers, Add up to, to, to those sales. And then I have to break down month by month of those $195,000. So I have some, some January, some February, March, et cetera, et cetera, until I get to the, to the last one, in this case, uh, October. If you take a look at these and compare it to the annual report. Do you remember the, the, the number one ninety five thousand dollars? In here, I just get the one ninety five thousand dollars and the dollars for the customers. What was the profit? The percentage. And that's it. So this is a high level report. And when I go back here and I just do the the monthly report is I'm adding some detail to my report. So it's still high level, but I, I just don't get the total amount by customers and I get it by month. So I can start uh, looking into some uh, seasonality for the customers, some special and particular projects that we have done with, with the customers. So we're, we're gonna see a spike on, on a particular month. So you can have that, that second level of detail while doing it month by month. But a deeper level of detail goes when you can combine more than two variables. And when I say more than two variables is if I, if I have the items, like the main selection, if you, if you see customers, we don't have any more options to do, but in items, I can add secondary selections to my report. So I can not only determine a group of items or an item in particular, but I can also cross that or filter that adding customers and sales employees. So this top in part of the report stays the same. Then I have my items, and again, I can do it by code or by groups. In this case, we have selected the rainbow printers. And I'm not gonna select any, so we can have all the items for all the customers. And let's run it. So again, remember $195,000. This is the list of all the items that add up to that to that amount. And in this case, let me go, just go back so you see the difference. I'm gonna run the, the, the report on a quarterly basis. So I don't get the months, I get the quarters. So quarter one, quarter two, quarter three. In this case, so we had a terrible quarter two, no sales at all. And I have the breakdown by item in each of the of the quarters. So again, just a little more detail from that high level information that we had at the beginning. Let me go to the purchases purchasing module. 
purchasing reports, and then we're gonna see purchase analysis. So you see, it's pretty much the same window that, that we saw for the sales. The only difference is in this case, we're not talking about customers, we're talking about vendors. So we don't see AR invoices, we see, we see AP invoices, purchase orders, they open a purchase order that we have, and go to sales. We have the vendors, and again, I can do items and have my secondary selection. So once you have a, a very good feeling about one of the, 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 the two, then the second one is just a continuation of that, uh, of that um, um, like basic knowledge that you have uh, gathered. So I have uh, just a few more minutes. I'm gonna jump into the second hidden gem that, that I have for you today, which is the, um, the reports scheduler. So for the report scheduler, um, one of the things that uh, that we need besides the two that, that I mentioned at the beginning is to have a query for it. So let me go to, to my query manager. I'm going to Tools, Queries, Query Manager. And I have selected this query that I have uh, as part of my system. It's called Customer by Sales Amount. And I'm going to see this bottom here, Schedule. So I'm going to click on Schedule. And the system just pops a window that allows me to schedule when I get this report. So this is the query, very important. I have a print layout assigned to that, to that report. So I'm gonna get it in my PDF format. I can decide if uh, the report is gonna take too much time or not. I mean, how many time do we want the system to spend on the, on, on the report? So let's say, I'm gonna say to don't spend more than 13, minutes doing this and I can tell you okay when do I want the system to to start running the report most of the times you do this in, in like in, in off hours like around midnight when you know for sure there's not gonna be anyone connected that can one way or another influence the report so you can select the time that you want to start the report and then you select the recurrence or the occurrence of the reports you want to do it on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis and if whatever you select then you're going to have multiple options to just just to do it so daily repeat it every day every two days every three days whatever and I want this report to end, I don't know, uh, January 31st, because then uh, we're gonna switch to another type of reporting. Inside. You can define all that in here. You can select what type of subject email do you want to get, so let's say a report. Sales by customer. Daily, so you know what you're getting. And if you want some text to go with it, you can do it, especially if you are sharing this with someone else. So then you can add recipients here to your, um, to your list. So, People within the company will get these uh, these reports. And then you can select the format that you want to get this report. Let's say you want to get it in, in a PDF. And yeah. 
let's yeah let's let's say that um, I schedule these for to be run and started on the 9th like it's like a couple of days ago and they run the time for start running this is gonna be almost uh, let's say be almost midnight so it's gonna be 11 43 and that's it You need to put your password to the system work on that you are authorized to do this and voila. That was Steco. Supreme so motion today around midnight, past midnight. I will be getting this report daily. So I don't need to think about it, I don't need to waste time creating the report, even if I have already a query for it. When I open my email first thing in the morning, I got this output. So I think uh, that's all from me now. I just uh, want to thank you all of you for your time. I hope you uh, you have enjoyed this presentation about the system reports. One of the hidden gems that we have for you. On part of this uh, customer day 2020 presentation.